Well, there's a good chance that any locally produced television you've seen this week on any station will have had some creative input from a graduate from Hamilton College's acclaimed Media and Production Skills course. For almost 30 years, it's turned out editors, directors and camera operators and indeed virtually anyone else working in film and television. Well, now there are fears for the future of this course and others in the wake of the state government's budget changes. It's not quite opening night and there's definitely no red carpet, but for these film students, what's happening here and now is every bit as important. Um, I feel just the length and the distance of the shots kind of makes it lose a lot of energy. They're all part of Hamilton College's Media Arts Production Skills course, or MAPS as it's better known. In front of the toughest audience of all, their peers, the latest films are being reviewed. It is awful in some ways, but uh, everybody goes through it. So I suppose there is that side to it and, um, and you do learn a lot from it and often at the time if someone criticises your work you might not feel too good about it but when your film is better in the end often you realise uh, that it was worth it. The school says its graduates work in film and television as directors, editors, designers and sound operators. In Andrew Kunzel's case, it's taken him to work on films such as Lord of the Rings, King Kong and I, Robot as a computer animator. Maps really was the thing that got me uh, involved in computer animation to start out with. If it wasn't for Maps, I don't think I would have had... I don't know if I would be where I am at the moment. I don't know if I'd be a computer animator. <laughs> One of his most recent works has just been shown on the ABC, Figaro Foe, winning an International Children's TV Award. But now MAPS coordinator Peter Thurmer says it's all under threat. In the recent state budget, the government changed the rules for funding of adult re-entry courses with a cut-off age of 21. They've initially said that we'll cut people off at 21 and we'll have nobody going back into school. You don't get another chance to go back in and um, you have to go through the TAFE system or the university system. The grief the issue has caused is underlined by a letter sent from Federal Labor MP Steve Georgianis to State Education Minister Jay Weatherall, which in part says, I feel strongly that the proposed cuts to adult secondary education will not be worth the short-term cost-cutting benefit. This week there was an about face, allowing people over 21 to continue to receive subsidies to get their secondary school certificates. But Hamilton College says that won't apply to the MAPS course, or indeed any course that's outside the secondary school certificate. The college estimates students could be paying up to $9,000 for a course like MAPS, and Peter Thurmer says that means most of his students wouldn't be able to continue. 2012 is where, it's, where we'll, all the change will come about and um, we could continue but we would be wholesalely modified. We'd have to make very, very big changes. So we've had a look at um, this again and I'm not sure about the sound quality. Like 33-year-old George Valiotis epitomises the different paths people take to MAPS. He worked as an educator in communicable diseases and domestic violence. But if the proposed changes were in place now, he says his dream would be over before it began. Oh, I couldn't afford to do it at all. I, I don't qualify for any student support or anything else, so I have to support myself um, while I study. Um, and so if the fees were any higher, I just I couldn't do it. It's by no means the only film or media course in South Australia. The universities offer them, and according to the students, so does TAFE. But MAPS supporters insist there's nothing like this. A lot of the people who are studying this year actually dropped out of all the other options that are available in South Australia and came here. So for me, that was the first thing that impressed me, that they're there's an indication that there's a real point of difference here. And the other thing is, it's practical. Like, we just continually make films. It's, con it's absolutely based on the crafts and on doing them. I think there's room, actually, for maps to go the opposite way to the way that they're pushing. It should actually be, be expanding. Ashley Page is another who came to MAPS as a mature age student and she teaches here once a week, today helping Jonathan Baker with his film about kite surfing. Ashley Page's latest film was an adaption of Adelaide author Peter Goldsworthy's short story The Kiss and so she says more than just filmmakers will suffer. Oh, I was outraged. I think it's, um, I think it's really um, narrow-minded. It's very disappointing. 
Education Minister Jay Weatherall says... The original purpose of adult re-entry schools was to provide a second chance to people who missed out on finishing school the first time around. The changes to adult re-entry are about refocusing these schools on young adults completing their schooling. This filmmaking course is not about finishing high school. The students argue it doesn't make sense to make it harder to get a film career when the government is spending millions of dollars on a film hub at the old Glenside Hospital site. They argue it doesn't fit with the Adelaide Film Festival. Being average is good, isn't it? Did you know if you're average, you're better off than most? And speaking of festivals, Charlotte Hamlin's mockumentary, How to Be More Average, just won Best Short Film under five minutes at the Montreal Film Festival. And amongst the students at Hamilton College, Charlotte Hamlin says her film won another award last year. Can you see how being average is better? It was awarded the Mike Ran Award for Excellence in Filmmaking and, um, and actually last year was the first year that we had that award at the school. Um, he, he sponsored the award because he believed the school was doing such a good job for the state and for the industry and um, I find it disappointing that uh, he would give us such an honour like that and then um, make these changes this year. We asked Mike Rand whether he still felt the school was doing a good job and would he continue to sponsor the award. The Premier said he's happy to have the award continue to be presented in his name, however it's ultimately a decision for the school. It is perhaps the worst cliché in filmmaking, but everyone loves a happy ending. At this stage though, it's not clear whether this story will get one. <laughs>